Welcome back to Midpoint. Also, welcome back the Communications Director at United for Care, People United for Medicinal Marijuana, Maurizio Passariello. Also joined by the President of Smart Approaches to Marijuana, former Senior Advisor at the White House Office of National Drug Policy, Dr. Kevin Sabat joins us. Maurizio, here's to you. Former Justice Ken Bell wrote, once an amendment is in the Constitution, it is extremely difficult to change. A subject such as this should be addressed by general legislative law. What would be the problem with making this a legislative law instead of making it an amendment to the Constitution? You would have to ask the legislature about that. They have refused to take on this topic for years and years and years. I mean, we've had four years in a row where uh, legislation has been introduced and they haven't even heard testimony regarding this whole matter. And we, we've had patients go up there to try to give their testimony and it hasn't been heard. So it basically has come to the point where we basically had to go this route. Obviously, it's not the perfect route, but it's the only route that's left to suffering patients here in Florida. It's not the perfect route, but Dr. Sabat, as you pointed out before, with all the courts getting involved, Supreme Courts, local courts as well, it's not perfect. But isn't it that, that lack of perfection, if you will, or the loopholes that are open here are the things that you and so many others are complaining about? I mean, that's the issue. Look, nobody wants to deny cancer, you know, end-stage life cancer patients or folks with debilitating nerve conditions, anything to give them the relief. The problem is that has nothing to do with what Amendment 2 is about. That's why, you know, former Supreme Court Justice Bell, uh, Ken Bell, has come out against Amendment 2 and actually was arguing with, you know, how we look at the definition. Because essentially it says that it's any other condition for which a physician believes that the medical use of marijuana would likely outweigh the health risk. I mean, I can get a doctor A to do anything, um, and you will find someone willing to, you know, make big bucks. And really, that's what this is about. This is about starting, just like we did in Colorado, um, you know, going down the path of legalization and essentially having these big commercialized, you know, candies and cookies and all sorts of things that are targeted towards kids. If this was about the dying cancer patient, why wasn't it written that way? It's not written that way because it's not but about you see, that. It is written that way, and that's exactly what the Supreme Court of Florida, in its advisory opinion to the Attorney General, said, which is that they understood perfectly well that the language was clear. This is for debilitating medical conditions. And even though but it does say other group conditions, it says it under the definition of All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, our time is short here, and we've run out of time on this segment. Please, let's have you both back again. We're doing this for an entire week to talk about medicinal marijuana and marijuana in America as well. Sure. We will have you back on again. I thank you both for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, Florida voters in a unique position come Election Day. They can either reelect a governor or replace him with his predecessor. Newsmax takes a closer look at the gubernatorial matchup being touted as one of the nastiest in the country. There's nothing sunny about the race for governor in the Sunshine State. Republican incumbent Rick Scott is trying to keep former Governor Charlie Crist from reclaiming the top job in Tallahassee. The fight is playing out in vicious attack ads, which may be why voters don't really like either candidate. So when you see his ads, remember it was guys like Rick Scott that crashed our economy. Sponsored by Let's Get to Work. Just the other day... Do you think that nothing about Obamacare has irreparably harmed uh, Floridians in any way? No, I don't think so at all. I think it's been great. In Quinnipiac's September survey, 48% of those polled said they found Scott unfavorable. That compared to a 42% favorable rating. Likewise, Christ got an unfavorable rating of 49% compared to a 41% favorable. The negativity on the airwaves isn't helping either candidate in their uphill climb to sway voters. Scott, throughout his term, has struggled with low approval ratings, especially when it came to his cuts to education. Christ is fighting to overcome a controversial political past. The once self-described Reagan Republican is on this ticket as a Democrat. That's after he chose to run for the U.S. Senate in 2010 as an independent. No matter the outcome, the stakes are high. Republicans are expected to keep their hold on the state legislature, highlighting the importance of the state's governor. And be sure to go to Newsmax.com as we continue to count down to the midterms. And be sure to watch us right here on Newsmax TV on election night for our special live coverage of the midterms, You Decide 2014. We'll decide telling it like it is after this.